Hey loves, welcome to my channel. My name is Mia. Um, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I create my graph patterns for my baby blankets. Um, the software that I use is my iPad Pro, my Apple Pencil, Photoshop for iPad, of course my web browser uh, Safari or Google Chrome, and I use the software Stitch Fiddle, which you can find online um, at stitchfiddle.com. So the first thing we're going to do is open up our browser, either Safari or Google Chrome, and search for the designs you are interested in. I chose to search for teddy bear since the theme of the baby shower was we can barely wait, and the invite had a teddy bear on it holding balloons. Use the words clip art when searching for your image for best results. Scroll until you find what you like or what pops out to you and save it to your iPad or whatever device you are using. Save as many images that you like. I chose this teddy bear and scrolled a little bit to see what else was available and chose the one that matches the yarn that I have. You don't have to necessarily do this because you can change the colors in Stitch Fiddle, which I'll show you later, but to save me time, I chose what matches what I already have. Next we're going to open up Photoshop and create a new canvas which is located in the bottom left corner. The dimensions that I use are 800 by 800 with a transparent background. Once your canvas is created, we're going to add our photo. Click on the plus sign in the right hand column and click photos. Search for your photo and add to canvas. After it's added to canvas, click done in the right corner, then go to the left hand column, click the lasso tool and find the magic wand. Use the magic wand to remove background if there is one by clicking the erase tool down at the bottom. Now you can resize the image to your liking and place it where you see fit for your design. Just play around with it and do what you like. As I mentioned earlier, the baby shower invite had the teddy bear hold a balloon. So I decided that I wanted to use that aspect to create the baby's name. So me being me, the creative person that I am, found balloon font that I downloaded to my iPad. If you need me to show how I did that, please leave a comment below and I'll make a video on it in the future. I chose the balloon cool font on fontspace.com. After you find the font you're looking for, download to your device, return to Photoshop, click on your text button in the left hand column, and write the baby's name. I wrote the name full out, but then I decided to get a little fancy and created individual letters. Play around with how you want the font to look. There's no right or wrong way to place your font. Remember this is your design, and what you like is what you like. Here I am resizing all the letters to be the same size and giving them a little personality. These are balloons and you know when holding balloons they are never the same length. They are all over the place. So just keep resizing and get them to you know look like balloons. They're balloons. <laughs> so um, yeah that's what I'm doing here. I'm resizing them and giving them a little bit more personality making some taller than the others. There's no right or wrong way to do this, but just play around with it and whatever you decide to do is what you decide to do. I love this. So like I said, I'm resizing them, making them all the same size. Uh, 177.4 is the size that I use for the font. Um, I'm turning them crazy ways to kind of give that floating effect. Um, this is definitely uh, it's a little time consuming, but it, it makes the process all worth it. So just continue to do that and moving the, the letters up and down. Whatever you decide to do is, you know, what you decide to do. I know I keep saying that, but uh, yeah, just do it. You know, turn the letters right, left, up and down, whatever you decide to do. After you get the letters to your liking, you're going to make a new layer. With the new layer, we are going to create strings to attach to the balloons. Of course, I'm going to have it look like the bear is holding them to stay on theme. Click on the paintbrush tool in the left hand column and you're going to create squiggly lines from the bear's hands up to the bottom point of the letters. So you know for our birthdays how we have the numbers and all that stuff, that's the, that's the look that I was going for. So uh, just create these lines going through the bear and we're going to fix it all up once we get to stitch fiddle but the point of it is to have it look like the bear is holding balloons i 
I then decided that I wanted to give the bear a little bit more life. So I went back to Safari and I found a bow to give the bear a bow and a crown to give the bear a crown. You're going to do the same process as you did with the bear and save them. And you're going to go back to Photoshop and add the photos to the canvas with the bear. You don't have to make a new canvas. Just click the plus sign and add the photos to the canvas you're already on. Now you can save all your photos when you first do your search for your design, but that's totally up to you. I like to go back and forth because my design changes all the time. In the middle of it, when I'm done with it, I like to just go back and just save as many photos as possible just because I changed my mind a lot. So we're going to do the same process here with the crown. I chose this pink crown because that was just something that was bold and there. You can change the color of it. I'm going to change the color of it to yellow just so that when I get to Stitch Fiddle, I don't have to necessarily change the color in Stitch Fiddle. It's already there. So yeah, I changed the color to yellow. And now I'm just going to resize it to fit on the top of the bear's head. And then we're going to save it by clicking the share button at the top and doing a quick export. So this is the image that we created. If you're happy with your image, what we're gonna do now is go to stitchfiddle.com, go back to your browser, open up Stitch Fiddle, and we're going to create our graph. Stitch Fiddle is my absolute favorite website. There's a free option, there's also a paid option. Uh, what we're going to do is click on create a new graph, choose the craft that you're using, in my case it's crochet, then we're going to click on crochet with colors. Then choose from the picture option and find the picture we created. Now we're going to choose the size of the blanket. Click on size, exact size for the width and height. I chose 135 by 135. Usually I do 125 by 125 or 135 by 135. Just depends on my mood, honestly. Then you're going to click on save chart. Now the chart is going to come up with all these crazy colors, but we have the option to fix all of that. So what you're going to do now is you're going to zoom out of the photo to see the whole thing. Now you can see your color palette that's on the left hand side. These are all the colors that are in your graph. So it shows 10 colors. With this color palette, you can add or subtract colors. What I'm doing here is adding a color for the strings of the balloons. Um, I want the strings to be one color, so I chose this yellow. Um, you see on the graph, there's spaces, there's different colors of the strings. So what I'm gonna do is just take this yellow and go up the strings and just make all of it yellow. Fix the gaps in between the um, this colors to make it all one color. <laughs> If that makes sense as you can see on the screen every I'm just taking the graph and taking my pencil on the graph and just changing the color you can do this with your mouse as well if that's what you're using but yeah that's what I'm doing right now I chose yellow for this color for the strings and I zoomed out what we're gonna do next is just continue doing that until you get all of the strings to one color this is definitely time consuming, but gotta do what you gotta do. Another way to remove color from the color palette is by double clicking on that color and clicking remove and merge at the bottom. You're gonna choose whichever color you want that color to merge with and click apply. So all of my gray just turned to black if you recognize that. If not, you can go back and look at that again. But I'm zooming in to show you where I removed all that light gray that I had in the palette. So um, now we're going to continue that process with removing or adding color to the palette. So now I'm scrolling up to the crown and I'm going to fix all that black because the black is not needed. I'm going to change all of that to yellow so that it can look like a crown. Um, this process is pretty easy as well. You're just using your mouse and you're clicking on the yellow in your palette to make the crown look like a crown. So what I'm going to be doing now is just speeding this up um, and fixing the top part of the crown. I'm not sure what the top part of the crown is called, but yeah, I'm fixing the top part um, and I'm going to be adding the string for the letter K and the letter A. So yeah, just sit back and watch that process and we'll get to the next one soon. Once you're done with the crown, you're going to go through and pretty much color correct um, on the graph. We're going to remove some of the black, we're going to remove some of the brown, remove some of the extra yellow that I don't need. Um, it's pretty much going to be adding and merging colors that are not needed for this particular graph at the moment. 
Once I finished cleaning up the graph, I decided to add the ending part of the balloon to each letter. I'm not sure what that part is called, but it's the part that you blow in and that you um, attach the string to. I also went on and added the colors that I wanted to use for the name and for the bow at the bottom. Once you have your color palette figured out, I'm going to be showing you how to fill each letter with different colors. You're going to double click on the color of your choosing where a dialog box will pop up. In this dialog box, you can add or remove rows and edit the color you are using. Scroll down till you see filled with and the particular color you chose. Something you must remember is to make sure that your letters are closed in or the space that you're trying to fill is closed in. You don't want any open gaps because if that happens, you will end up filling in the whole graph when you just want to fill in a specific spot. I'll make sure that all of the, the spaces are closed in and we're going to keep doing that for the rest of the letters on this graph. And also remember the bow down at the bottom. I mean, yeah, that's pretty much all that we have to do. Oh, so when looking at the letters, you see there's some white still in there. So what we're going to do is just take the, our pencil and just fill in with that with that specific color for each letter. That's all you have to do. And our graph is done after that. Um, I hope this video was useful to you. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. Um, this is my first time doing a video this way, so if I went too fast, I apologize, but please just um, let me know if I can help you with anything. And here's the finished blanket once it was completed. I, it took me about a week to do. Thank you all for watching, and please like, comment, and subscribe, and share, and I'll see you next time. Bye.